the red knob, the one that turns off the engine. Student pilots are often afraid of it, and licensed pilots tend to forget about it. I'm currently in a situation where I'm jumping between different types of airplanes, I'm having a lot of fun, but I'm also inspired to think about leaning in all these various different configured aircraft. Well, I'm not quite in the steering yet, but I think it's going to be a pretty good summer. More on that later. Anyway, so as a rental pilot, i got to be honest, I'm definitely guilty of not thinking about leaning often enough. Paying for a wet rental pretty much makes the cost of fuel not even part of the equation for us rental pilots, but the bottom line is there's still the environmental factor. If you're running around rich, you're just dumping tons of brutal emissions, and you're fouling your plugs, so that's just a maintenance nightmare, and you can cause yourself some inconvenience if you end up stopping somewhere and then finding you've got a foul plug when you're doing your run-up. Anyway, regarding technique, the 172R is probably your easiest airplane to lean. You've got the EGT gauge that you can work with, and you've got the precise control of the veneer uh, knob which allows you to move it by pressing the button to get a big movement and then for fine resolution precise changes you twist it. So while you're leaning you're basically looking for the EGT, that's the exhaust gas temperatures, to rise and then to be rich of peak, uh, once it peaks then you richen it back up and get it running just a little bit below what the peak was. Uh, now to get lean of peak that takes a lot of precision and as a private pilot I'm just not going to get into that. It's your, your risk possibly overheating or damaging the engine uh, basically when you're rich, that extra fuel that you're wasting is actually acting as a cooling mechanism for the engine. So, yeah, you're wasting a little bit of fuel, but it's more conservative. So let's go rich of peak, for our sakes. Now for an airplane like the Super Cub, you're definitely looking at the Bush Pilot technique. All you got is your mixture and your RPM. So basically it's a matter of leaning it until the RPM peaks, and then it'll start to drop, obviously, as the engine starts to starve. And then just push it back in, get the RPM to peak again, and get it just a little bit rich of peak. Now, of course, that was assuming you had a fixed pitch propeller, like you also do in the 172R, so technically you could also be looking at RPM, but if you got exhaust gas temperature, that's more precise, you may also use it. But with an airplane with a constant speed propeller, you'd think you can't use RPM because the governor in the prop is always going to try to fight with power settings to maintain a certain rotation per minute. So in an airplane with a constant speed prop, you definitely need to use exhaust gas temperature to lean it, ideally. However, there's this one particular airplane that I'm flying, which is a bit of an enigma, She's got a constant speed prop, but no EGT gauge. And uh, a buddy of mine was going to be doing a training flight in it, so I definitely took the opportunity to ride along. Highly recommend doing that, because you can always learn while not under pressure to perform. So this is a fun airplane. It's a Piper Warrior that's been modified with a constant speed prop. The engine is more power than it originally had. It's actually a heavier engine and they had to bolt a weight into the baggage compartment to account for the CG change. Now it's fully certified and approved, but it still is a pretty unique airplane and I'm still working on learning the nuances with it. It has a manifold pressure gauge obviously, being a constant speed prop, but if you look at it, the range on this gauge is not ideal for this particular airplane because it's not a turbocharged airplane. And as you can see, this range goes way above 30, which, you know, if you didn't have a turbocharger, you're gonna be limited to atmospheric pressure. So I don't know why this one reads all the way to 75, but the end result is that the resolution is very low on the instrument, so it's tough to get precise readings with it. So we're taking that out of the equation here as far as what to look at while leaning. So on the way back to the airport after the lesson, I asked Dennis for a quick demo on how we should lean this airplane. Do we have time real quick to talk about leaning this girl? Was that leaning? Fix a bit of a well, enigma? With a constant speed prop, the engine's going to constantly compensate for the lack of power Right. So in, in effect, what you're really waiting for is to actually feel it start to stumble. You got to do it slowly enough that you know it has a chance to catch up. In cruise flight, you can actually feel the thing decelerate a little bit as it, the mixture gets so lean that the motor actually stops producing its normal power. Failing that, of course, you're going to feel it start to get rough. It's, we call it rolly meaning that it's kind of oh, yeah. as, it's, as it becomes unhappy. There you can now, you can feel it yep. kind of getting a little bit rolly. So now just advance the mixture a little bit. You can hear the engine surge a little bit. The prop will change pitch to try and compensate for the lack of power and then the sudden resurgence of power. Basically right now your lead is about as efficiently as you can without having the other equipment in here like exhaust gas temperature gauge or a fuel flow gauge that you could measure it by. And then adding to the challenge with that plane is that it's a lever type control which is harder to be precise with. But anyway, that was an awesome lesson and I'm definitely going to work on that with that airplane. So let's start thinking about that red knob more often. And just remember to go rich again whenever you need to add power and definitely don't forget to make it part of your downwind check. 
unless density altitude dictates leaning for max power, but that's a whole other story. This video was inspired by an email exchange with Dennis, and I've included a solid excerpt from that email that really gets into the details of this stuff. Um, the other thing we haven't talked about is ground ops. I think the idea is to lean as much as you can on the ground, just let it start to choke out and then give it a little bit more gas and just let it be really lean. Um, I think the idea is that you can't really overheat it when you're idling or taxiing around, but obviously you want to be rich again for climb, so you don't want to forget for takeoff. Now I know there's a lot of different schools of thought on leaning. I definitely am starting to feel like I'm sounding like an instructor here, so let me be clear, I'm not an instructor. I'm just a private pilot doing my best to stay current and learn. I'd love to see anybody else's thoughts in the comments. So thanks for watching and to all the new subscribers, thanks for stopping by. Um, but please check out some of my older videos. I'm not monetizing. I share for the love of flying and giving back to this awesome aviation community that has helped me so much as I've been on my journey to get better as a pilot. And my usual disclaimer, I'm a private pilot doing my best to stay current and learn. I make these videos for my own self-analysis purposes. I'm happy to share and positive feedback is welcome. Uh, so for more virtual ride-along flying videos like this, please subscribe and keep on keeping your flight chops sharp. Wherever you are in the world, share your aviation. Share aviation, a network for pilots by pilots.